Welcome to Lesson 2 in the Basics of Developing for Windows Phone Using XAML and C Sharp Series. My name is Crystal. I'm going to show you how to store information on the Windows Phone so that it can be retrieved. Storage is isolated for my app on two main levels, by application or by site. Publisher, domain, the user, me, also plays a card. I will be using the Isolated Storage Settings class provided by .NET Framework. In the lower left corner, you see a zoomed out view of the stopwatch ticking from the Lesson 1 video. Some of you asked me how this was done. Now you see, it is a Windows Phone application and something you can learn how to do. I'll teach you. Enjoy the lesson and enjoy the music by Michael McNevin at Just Catch. And then you shake it. And even though it's all erased, the time you spent was not a waste. And that's the way it ought to be. No channel switchers. I am looking at the directory on my computer that contains the solution file from Lesson 1. Mostly, information was covered about different files and what the template builds, the Solution Explorer, Properties, XAML, and the Designer. Not much was actually done to my stopwatch project. I could start over really fast. I launch Microsoft Visual Studio 2010 Express for Windows Phone. I choose New Project. Visual C Sharp will be my net development language. I will use the basic Windows Phone application template. The name of my project will be Stopwatch. My location is good. I will let Visual Studio make a new directory for me. I click OK and my template is being created. On mainpage.xaml, I add line breaks and change my application title text to Stopwatch and my page title text to Welcome. I am whoever is holding the phone or running the emulator, so I need to know my name. I will use a text box control to collect the data and a text block control for the prompt. Since I am going to build something, I need a toolbox. I toggle the display of the toolbox on by clicking the toolbox icon on the standard toolbar. I could also press Ctrl W X. In the toolbox, I click on the text block control, drag it to my designer, and let go. This will be for the label that tells me to put my name in. Now I drag a text box control to my designer. This is where I will enter my name. I'm done with the toolbox, so I turn it off. XAML to define the controls has been created for me in the grid named Content panel. I separate the property settings and rearrange them. I like to see the name property right away, so I put it first. A lot of designers don't concern themselves with naming like I do. This is because I come from writing VBA to track databases, spreadsheets, and other documents. Names are important, so interaction of code and XAML elements makes sense. Aside from being able to see which properties are set faster, another advantage of using line breaks between property settings is that lines are quicker to move and copy. I select a line by clicking to the left of it in the margin. This line is just part of a statement. XAML doesn't care about the order that properties are specified. I let go of my mouse to signify that my selection is done. I click somewhere on the selection, drag it to a new location, and let go of the mouse. I will change the name property to be something logical. I will keep the initial letters that say text box. Then I click at the end before the quote mark, backspace the number out, type an underscore, and then M-Y-N-A-M-E in proper case, my name. The whole property is text box underscore my name. What is in text block is a prompt for my text box value. I change the text property to be what I want displayed. I set text equal quote my space name colon space quote. For the text box control, I initialize the text to be an empty string. I could delete the text property setting, but I want to leave it because down the road it will be modified by code. Remember what XAML stands for? A markup language can't do calculations. That helps to know when to use the term markup and when to use the term code. XAML is markup. C-sharp 
is code. GML, Generalized Markup Language, was developed in the 60s for the IBM text formatter. Tags were added to plain text files, which everything can read. This allowed documents to be created and formatted independent of equipment. Then came SGML, Standard Generalized Markup Language, which XML, Extensible Markup Language, was based on. Microsoft added tags to handle structured values and objects to create XAML. The A originally stood for Avalon. Now the A in XAML stands for Application. HTML, Hypertext Markup Language, is the basic language of web pages. If you want to learn more about HTML, I highly recommend spending a day reading the Cool Nerds Core HTML Quick Reference. This is how I learned HTML in the early 90s. Even though the page says it's not for beginners, I was one when I learned, and it's great. It figures the creator is into access also. I am highlighting the tags you should focus on. By understanding HTML, not only will you be able to create your own web pages, but you will also have a better foundation for understanding other markup languages, such as XAML. Markup languages generally use tags that come in pairs, a start tag and an end tag. Definition of a stack panel, which I will be using next, looks like this in its simplest form. Open angle bracket, stack panel, close angle bracket, open angle bracket, slash, stack panel, close angle bracket. Whatever is between the start stack panel tag and the end stack panel tag is in the stack panel. A stack panel makes it easy to line up controls horizontally or vertically. So that my two controls will line up nicely, I will surround them with the stack panel. I want to start the stack panel just before my text block control and end it right after my text box control. I make space and start typing. Angle bracket, S, T, now I see what I want in IntelliSense. Stack panel is highlighted. I press the tab key to choose it. I type a space, and now I am prompted with a list of recognized terms for stack panel. The orientation of the stack panel will be horizontal, since I want the controls to be on the same row. When the phone is turned sideways, there will be less vertical space. As I type a close angle bracket for the stack panel definition, the stack panel end tag is automatically inserted for me. I want the end tag to be after my controls, not right after the stack panel is defined. I select from where I am to the end of the line by pressing Shift End. The End key takes me to the end of the line. Pressing Shift while I move selects as I go. I press Ctrl X to cut my selection. I go below my text box control, make space, and paste the end tag using Ctrl V. Now that my stack panel is created, I want to think of a logical name. I can use either the name property that is a member of the stack panel element, or I can use the x colon name property which every XAML element supports. I place my mouse just after the stack panel start tag and type space x colon. I am prompted with IntelliSense. I type in and press tab to choose name. My start tag now reads open angle bracket stack panel space x colon name equals quote stack panel underscore my name end quote space orientation equals quote horizontal quote close angle bracket. If a stack panel is created on the designer using the toolbox, the markup created for me specifies the name property, which starts with stack panel followed by a number. Name can be changed to x colon name. On page 34 of Programming Windows Phone 7 by Charles Petzold, he says that x colon name and name are, quote, basically equivalent. Name only works with elements, that is, instances of classes that derive from framework element, because that's where the name property is defined. But x colon name works with everything. I see on page 15 that in markup, Silverlight classes, quote, become XML elements. Properties become XML attributes, end quote. My class is the stack panel. Name and orientation are properties of that class. 
By using Stack Panel in my markup, my Stack Panel also becomes an XML element. For this reason, you may hear the terms property and attribute used interchangeably. You might also hear setting or value. Because terminology is so often a stumbling block, I use a lot of words so you can get comfortable with them. A little further down, I read that there is always one instance of the phone application frame and that it hosts my phone application page, which is informally referred to simply as a page. Petzold's book is a free download and a good read. The link is in this video description and also my channel description. Since I have a stack panel to line things up, the margin settings for the controls inside don't matter much right now, so the margin settings can be deleted. If I delete the width setting for my text box, the text box resizes itself for what is needed, which is not much right now. I do want to set the width so it will be uniform. I press Ctrl Z to zap my last action. Ctrl Z is undo what I just did. I use that a lot. My width setting comes back. I definitely don't need my name text box to be this wide though. 460 can't even fit. Notice the right edge outside the designer. I look at my directives at the top of the XAML. I see this line. MC colon ignorable equals quote D quote D colon design width equals quote 480 quote D colon design height equals quote 768 quote. Phone dimensions are currently 480 wide by 800 tall. Designer dimensions may vary depending on the template. MC colon signifies that a statement is for markup compatibility and can be ignored by the XAML processor. D colon at the beginning of a phrase means a directive for the designer. MSDN says that designer dimensions are provided, quote, to make the design view behave correctly, end quote. MSDN also says that, quote, design time attributes are ignored during compilation and have no effect at runtime, end quote. In my case, the width of the designer is 480, so 460 is almost everything it's got. Rarely would I want something to be that wide. My whole phone measures two and a quarter inches wide, which also includes the casing around the display. For estimating, 100 pixels is about half an inch on the actual phone. I bump the width down to 200, which is about an inch. An inch and a half would be better, so I'll set the width to 300. Make your kids go ride the bike, show them what a tree looks like, teach them how to etch a sketch, fly a kite, or play some catch, making friends and do them good, that's why it's called a neighborhood. But if you can't... Thus ends Part A of this three-part lesson on isolated storage. From other markup languages such as GML, SGML, XML, and HTML, XAML, was created by Microsoft. I showed you the Cool Nerds Core HTML reference, Charles Petzold's book on programming Windows Phone 7, MSDN links, and how to use XAML to define controls, control properties, and how the designer dimensions relate to the actual phone. In Part B, I will continue looking at control properties such as padding and vertical alignment, then I talk about isolated storage and show you some good references. I tell you about different events and how to trigger code. Then I build C-sharp code to save and read my name to and from isolated storage. Don't worry if you never wrote C-sharp code before. Until a few months ago, neither had I. I hope you enjoyed the pieces of Etch-a-Sketch by Michael McNevin. Some of my other favorites by Michael are Bagger, John's Cocoons, Two Feet Ahead of the Train, and Hob Thrasher, which he co-wrote with his father in an airport. Michael has a great gift for storytelling with music. He's also a nice guy who cares about the world around him. Call your sister and your brother, your dad and your mom, you know? You really ought to try to get to know them all. With all the garbage... Stay tuned in and call your family. Be sure to visit the links in this video description. See you next time. Because life is like an
Etch-a-Sketch is better than a TV set. Mm -hmm.